Hi, my name is Karen Burns and I am with the Center for Instructional Technology uh, within the Office of Information Technology. I am going to present today um, in, in several sections here, uh, people.ua.edu. This is the web platform that the university has selected to use for faculty and for graduate student professional websites. Um, I manage all of these websites. I perform most of the training, which is usually done in face-to-face -face workshops, but we are venturing out, realizing not everyone is able to attend a workshop. So I am going uh, to attempt to put together several short videos uh, to condense our two-hour workshop into several small videos. Okay, so looking at the screen right now, and I hope that you're working alongside me using your own uh, technology. If you will be, if you'll begin with people.ua.edu, we'll take a look at this website and the various functions of this because you can refer back to this the entire time you're working on your site as you go to edit it. If you forget anything, uh, if you just want to learn to do something new or to look at some sample websites of what others have done. Uh, this is the website to go back to. So I'm going to start by going to the Learn tab, which is so named because it is where you learn everything to do with all things people.ua.edu. And I'm going to click on the online training guide. And let's talk about first things first. This is for those who cannot attend the workshop, but we're gonna go through it today. Just kind of a quick start tutorial. Um, we do cover a lot of things in the workshops beyond the technical how-tos. In particularly, um, we talk about ADA compliance and Americans with disabilities. So we're gonna start here with the training and support. First thing to know is that uh, we use a platform called Weebly. It is a commercially available platform that anyone can purchase, or there's even the free versions, which I highly recommend for students to use because they can carry it with them anywhere. Weebly offers a lot of um, storefront type of access, a lot of different features that we don't offer on our platform. For that reason, you'll see some limitations on that, but we do have the pro version, so you should have available to you everything that you need to actually do. Again, I recommend that you go to our people.ua.edu user manual um, on, on the Learn page to get all of the information, but you can go directly to Weebly if you want to search for something else. We'll click on the next. So the next page is talks about the UA Worldwide Web Policy. The Office of Strategic Communications mandates everything that is required for our websites. Faculty and graduate student websites are considered to be unofficial websites, and so you see in Section 3.0 that there is detailed listing of everything that you need to know. Please take the time to read that over. You will notice in number two, it does state that you must include a disclaimer on your website you don't have to add that in because we have added that for you in the footer section. You will see that you have a site disclaimer and a, um, a university disclaimer, UA disclaimer. So in the site disclaimer, it does um, specify everything that is listed here. We'll click on next. And again, this is more university web guidelines. First of all, and, and do read over these, but recognize that um, this UA is paying for your website, therefore you want it to look like UA, it means we have to have a UA logo in the header area. Each template has been given a specific logo. If you would like us to change that, I'm open to, to doing that, but it does have to be a UA logo. It must remain in the header section. Um, you will see there is a square A used as the favicon um, at the top of all of your websites, and so that also must, must stay in place. The footer text includes the appropriate links that UA requires. As illustrated here, um, please do not change any of that. Leave all of that alone. Coming down to the next bullet point, note that the university seal is reserved for the presidential use only. Um, you can do a photograph of it, but you cannot use the actual seal. And also, just stay away from athletic type of logos and you'll be fine on that. 
you can read more about the UA Web Guide and review their social media guidelines with the two links that I have given you here. Now let's talk about ADA compliance. ADA stands for Americans with Disabilities Act, and it's something that we take very, very seriously here at the university. Most of the time, whenever you think about ADA, you think about people who have physical disabilities involving, say, a wheelchair or a walker. You think about um, access ramps and doors being wide enough, that type of thing. We're going to think about the accessibility from the terms of anyone being able to access your website because you have built it properly. So um, this video, I'm not going to actually show it right now, but I really recommend that you take a few moments and watch this. It is about five to six minutes long and it is a uh, professor actually using a screen reader for everything. So he does give a lot of great examples. He starts off showing you uh, Microsoft Word, but then he moves right on along and he talks about how, how he uses the screen reader to access the web. Coming down the page, we'll talk about a few things specifically. So a screen reader, I've already referred to it a few times, and if you do not know, a screen reader is a device that is a, that is either connected to a computer or built into a computer that reads out loud everything that is on the screen to someone who may not be able to see the screen. And so it's going to read it from the top to the bottom, but users can actually use their keyboards to navigate the screen if you have built it properly. That means they can tab from link to link to link. Um, if they're interested in something, they can they can click another keystroke and go right in and learn more about it. Same way they can do titles. And I'm going to back up a little bit of what I always reference and, and think about in terms of a screen reader is how that you and I might interact with, say, a printed newspaper. We can hold that newspaper in our hands and we can look at it visually. And the great big bold on the front page is typically the headline. We know it's the headline simply because of the way it appears to us. Well, the same way with the screen reader, if someone has built the website properly, the title, the main headline, is going to have an H1 code behind everything that we see in the, um, the actual HTML code um, of the website. If they're not interested in that headline, they might jump down and want to read the next title. Well, you and I can visually scan and we can see bold, large text. And then we know smaller text that's not bold, it's just going to be the body. Same thing again, if, if, if we build the site using title element, which you're gonna see in a minute, then the user can scan from title to title to title and only go in and read the text that they're interested in. Okay, so it's very important to not just make, make regular text big and bold and assume that the user can recognize it as being a title. You'll see that more as we get into the work. The alignment, please use the left centered and right alignment. Do not just add extra spaces. You cannot add a tab key within the website, but um, you, you can do lots of spaces. Keep in mind that these are responsive design themes to the website, which means your, your website is going to respond and change its, its form according to whatever device someone is actually using. So if, let's say I'm on a mobile device, the website is gonna go much more linear, vertical, and compress everything down. If you have a lot of spaces in there, all of those spaces are going to make the website look really funny, as well as it is not good for accessibility. Okay, so PDF files that you upload, and I'm sure everyone uploads PDFs of some form, especially if you're a faculty member using them for instruction in the classroom or just, just to have available to your students. You want to make sure that they are accessible. A very simple way to tell is let's just pretend that the screen in front of you now is a PDF. Well, I'm going to use my mouse, and if I try to highlight some of the text like this, you see that I can do that. I can highlight a line of text at a time 
meaning the screen reader can read it because it recognizes it as text. However, if I tried to highlight it and the entire screen were to turn blue, that would mean that this is an image. When the screen reader gets to that image, it will simply announce image or say picture, and that's it. It will not be able to read any of the text. So we recommend that you test everything before you actually um, publish your website and actually use that. If you find that you have a, a document that is only an image, say something that you scanned on the copier and you had it sent to your email, more than likely that is just an image. You can run it through Adobe Acrobat and use the OCR feature, the optical character recognition feature, or we do have other software, but this is the most readily available. It will recognize all of the text that appears and convert it from an image into text. You may have to do some editing and some tweaking, but it works very, very well. All right, drop down menus. So drop down menus, you can use them on your site. You'll see that I have them on our site. However, you must add a link to each menu item from the top level page. We do that because not everyone is able to actually use a mouse, and so they cannot navigate the website by using a mouse. They have to use um, tabs or some other method, some other assistive devices. And what we find, and I'll just demonstrate here, is whenever we hover over a drop-down menu, I have to be able to hover with my mouse to get this screen to appear. If I'm just tabbing, this, the drop-downs do not ever appear which means someone using some other, assistive, some other assistive device can get to, say, the Learn tab, but they would not be able to get to these. Well, if they can get to the Learn tab, I'm going to click on it. Now you see I have each of those links that were also in the drop-down. There they are. Um, I've got accessibility. Of course, I have, I have a post-workshop survey, which I guess I should delete that one. Um, I haven't used that in a while, but they can get to, to everything right here, the workshops and the training guide, without having to, to actually use, use the hover. All right, let's go back to our training guide. First things first, let's get back to where I was. I believe I was on, nope, four. Okay. So photos, every image that you upload must have an alt text and I'm going to show you how to do that. Whenever your user is listening to the website, they will hear all of the text and then as the screen reader reaches an image, it says image or picture, and then it will read what is in the alt text box. Right now, Weebly has in it, or um, people.ua.edu has in that alt text box, the word picture, which means the user will hear picture, picture. That doesn't make sense, right? So we want to add in a description that will help the user to know what that picture is. Um, if the picture is just decorative only, we can add two quotes, and then the screen reader will skip it all together. And again, I will show you that more as we get into it. So video, video should be captioned, all right? If students are required to watch a video as part of your curriculum, then you are required to caption the video. If it's not, then um, it's just really the nice thing to do. We should also provide a transcript if it's possible to. YouTube is great. It can help you a good bit. We also have um, assistance available through the um, Technology Accessibility Office here on campus. They can help you. Right now they're offering some grants, so contact them if you have uh, a video that needs to be captioned, they can save you a lot of time and money, hopefully. All right, so audio, the same rule applies. You should have a written transcript. And then we ask that you just avoid flash files because they are not always, um, they do not always translate well with the screen readers. Okay, now you do see I put a note in here that we take accessibility very serious and your site must be in compliance before it is published. All right, and I do give you an accessibility guidelines that details all of the things that I've told you now and will continue throughout this training. 
Okay, so number five, using the right web browser. You should be using Chrome or Firefox whenever you log into your website. Safari will sometimes work, but does not always recognize the user. Whenever you go to sign in, it might say you don't exist. One time it, it works and the next time it doesn't. And we just don't use Internet Explorer for this. It just, it, it just does not work well. So your first time login and password setting. You should have already done this, hopefully. Whenever you requested your site, I sent you an email giving you instructions and a follow-up email that invited you to join and to create a um, user ID and a password. So your user ID, I think it's just your email that you gave me whenever you made your request and then you could set a password. Just be sure to, to create a really strong password. Keep in mind Weebly is not behind UA firewalls. It is protected. Uh, it's on redundant servers throughout the country, but um, we still yet want to be safe using good passwords. Then you do have some links about security for your computer. You may look at those at your leisure. Your public URL. If your website is a standard faculty or graduate student site that contains your professional information, then your uh, website will simply be your Bama ID. Let's say it's John Smith, so it would be J Smith is your Bama ID. People.ua.edu. If you are requesting a lab or a center of some type, then we might give you a specific URL. Uh, let's say smithlab.ua.edu, something like that. For those, we have to have the UR create, I'm sorry, the URL created, and it takes between 24 to 48 hours to get the site published once we have requested that URL. For all of those that just have the standard people.ua.edu website, once you request your site to be published, I give it a review. I review the site looking for everything that we've talked about with accessibility, and then once your site meets all of the accessibility and UA requirements, I publish your site and your site will be live immediately. From that point on, you will then have an orange publish button in the top right corner of your site editor so that as you make changes to the site, you will be able to edit and publish, edit and publish as much as what you need to and I am not involved unless you just need me to be involved. Okay, so um, your editor's URL is the link you see here, http semicolon backslash backslash uofa.weeblycloud.com slash portal. You will also find that link on our website where it says login at the top right corner or on the home page of the people.ua.edu website, you'll see a link for login site owners. With that, um, I believe this is going to be our last slide. Oh, nope, a few more things. Okay and I might have already covered some of it. So font alterations. If you're unhappy with the font size, the color, something, let's say all of your text you think is just too small, please just give me a call or send me an email and say, hey Karen, would you please make this font a little bit larger? Uh, my default font for my text and I can make that change for you very simply. Say if it's text or titles, whatever, I, um, I can do that you will be able to make those changes on an individual basis as in every time you add a text block or a title block you can make the change but I can do it for you globally and it will save you a great deal of time I don't mind doing that at all you're going to see in a minute that you cannot do that simply because you don't have access to the theme tab which is where that information is held uh, the footer uh, we do ask that you leave all of the information in the footer. I think we've already talked about that. You do have social media icons, or you may, depending upon your theme, have social media icons as part of your footer, and we do encourage you to customize those, or you can remove them. That is, that is your choice. So images, again, alt text must be added to every image. That includes slideshows and gallery images. SEO information, that stands for search engine operation information, and we do ask that you fill out the site description and the meta keywords, and I will cover that at the end here as well. Okay, a few other little bits and pieces, and we will go back to the home. 
I'm going to stop with this tutorial now and we will pick up with actually getting into the site editor next.